Hello everybody, Scott Alexander here, and I am on the Pride Gallery side. Uh, this is actually, we'd walk into my front door. I talk about painting rocks a lot, and I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to do a short video, uh, because the questions I have is more about the process than technique. Uh, process, I say because if there's certain steps that I take uh, to get the end result that I want. Uh, technique, you can vary the technique, you know, you can drizzle paint, you can dip it, you can do what you want, but, but it's after the paint's on the rock is what really matters what you do. Uh, so yeah, this is what, when you walk in, so there's a, you know, some examples of my work and stuff. Uh, and then this bowl of rocks. Uh, and I offer a rock to anybody who comes in new. I say, hey, on your way out, don't forget to take a rock with you. Some people ask me to sign them, some people don't. Some of them have my web address and my contact information on the back. Those typically I get for uh, business uh, meetings or if I'm doing a presentation or I'm, I'm marketing my uh, paint party business. Uh, that's what I leave my, as my business card. So I wanted to show you this technique. Uh, technique. See, I already did it. I want to, I hear Bam in the kitchen, and that sounds like he's going through trash. Bam! Bam! What are you doing? Come here, babe. Oh, you're not, oh, he wasn't in the, he was in trash, but he wasn't in the kitchen like I thought. Anyhow, uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you the process. I've got some started, uh, and it all starts with the spilled paint. No, that's another question I get a lot. Uh, about wasted paint, and I, I say it's not wasted, it's spilled. Uh, and this is, I'm gonna show you guys now how effective spilled paint can be if you take just a couple of extra steps at the end of your paint to kind of cut, preserve it so that it stays wet and doesn't dry out, but doesn't, uh, and, and it, it, it gets to a, a consistency that's better suited for painting rocks. So I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, so we are over on, back on the studio side, and I wanted to show you something. Well, let me show you, well, I didn't bring one, of course. Uh, can you bring me one of the finished rocks from the, from the front and that bowl? The bowl, the blue bowl? Just any one that looks absolutely and completely perfect, which you won't find. Okay, so the, the big question is usually about painting rocks, is what do you do with the bottom? You know, and then I, I have to laugh and say, well, first I have to decide what the bottom is, you know, at the beginning. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so this is, oh, this is a good one to show. The end result. This is a misshapen rock. It's, it's smooth on all sides and I like that. When I look for rocks, I look for rocks that don't have broken ends. I don't know why, I just don't like the edges. With fluid art, that's kind of one of those things that we, we do. And then kind of your everyday, normal, plain, flat rock, okay? The surfaces are, are porous, but they're not, they're not as porous as, say, uh, a, uh, I was going to say a sponge, but obviously not. But there are some rock sandstone, for example, that will soak up paint more than these. To prevent that, I just have developed the habit is, of, I usually spray paint the rocks prior to any, putting any paint on them. So it has a layer of something that's the barrier between the actual surface of the rock and the first layer of paint. And I say first layer because sometimes it takes a few layers to get a rock painted. Now, the bottom. So I guess whenever I got these rocks, I decided on this one, this back side was the bottom. On this one, it, I put whatever side it can stand up on, touching the least amount of rock on my rack as the bottom. Okay, because what's gonna happen is that when the paint runs, I mix with Elmer's glue, no secret, I'm an Elmer's glue guy. It will stick to these racks and it will develop lines. And I'll show you examples of that now. So that I'm gonna come back to. <clears throat> These I did the other day uh, and I forgot about them because they were under my table. And so what has happened now, and I started doing it already, started pulling some off is, and I'll show you right here, okay, gross. So what has happened? What happens when you leave something with glue all over it <laughs> just uh, on something? It got stuck. Okay, so here are all my rocks now. I'm gonna pull them off, and this is what happens on the bottom. We see the lines that were there from the rack. Now, I could do one of two things. It's easily repaired. If I like the design, I can just, you know, I could use this. I have a, a handheld sander. You know, all kinds of things you can use to get it, uh, just to kind of even out the bottom so it doesn't look so messy. Uh, I can go ahead and just, you know, grab a paintbrush and some paint from, and if the color matters to you, then that's cool. A lot of times it doesn't matter to me because ultimately I place rocks a certain way anyway and they don't do a lot of moving around. So it's not like everybody's gonna see 
the, the the bad side of the rock and it doesn't have to be the bad side because you painted it to begin with if you did the spray painting and when i say I spray painted i maybe sometimes i use a metallic sometimes a, you know a gold you know something that, that's shiny usually at least a gloss so that whenever it, if it does go all the way to the bottom of the rock uh, you're still seeing something that has a uh, dimension all right so if this is it my rock you know i have spilled paint here and that's what we're going to talk about here in a minute but i would just go in here and you know what there's a few lines i'm just going to paint over them kind of dull them out and this would be uh, and this is before i gloss it because once you gloss it sometimes these will blend in if you want to try to do pattern that's fine too um, you can do that with different brushes but like i said this is not something that i worry too much about because we're just gonna those just those couple of lines now that being said, I prefer this kind of a rack because it has the long skinny lines versus this kind of a rack, which is what I did rocks on earlier that are drying. You see the grid? Well, the grid tends to touch in more places and it's just more pieces you gotta take off. So that's, that's the only reason why I say I prefer this little one. All right, <clears throat> so covered this part and this part. Now, what I wanna show you is how I use my spilled paint. And why I say I don't, it's not wasted, because I will use as much of it as I can. Oh, and I'll show you, so at the, this rock, it's the way it goes, at the bottom of it, obviously it wasn't painted, and, but when I glossed it, I made sure these edges were smooth, and I glossed it, it looks just fine. It looks just fine, it's, I love this rock. It looks like a, I don't know, it looks like an animal to me. Um, some of them I could have done a better job with, because this one doesn't look so great, but it looks like I didn't gloss the bottom, and I don't know why. Maybe I was in a hurry, maybe I was running low. And then I forgot. Okay, so these are not, I wanna do these again. I like the colors on these, so I'm gonna to try to save some of these, but I do have a couple that I want to do. And I'll show you the process that, I'm, that I've, and the process changes, guys. It's not, you know, written in stone. It's, it's all experimentation, especially with rocks. I mean, it's not a canvas, you know? It's not, uh, it doesn't hit you as hard in the pocketbook, I guess. Well, I mean, could, I guess. All right, so here's my rock. Again, this is a one that I painted previously. So what I was thinking this time to do, now the, here's my spilled paint, and look at all those wonderful swirly colors. This is the spilled paint from, it's still drying behind me, so <clears throat> the swirly painting which started off as a swipe, then it went to a, I don't know, the, oh, then it went to a traveling tree ring, and then I had, I, I don't know, it's all kinds of things. So there was a lot of paint at the end, but it was all paint that I was, I was at the end of all my colors that I had mixed, and there was just a little bit of each or some more of others, and so I just threw them all together. That's why that's not really no rhyme or reason, except that it came from the same painting. Uh, there may have been some leftover from a painting before because there's some red in there, and I didn't use red on that one. So, let me get this ready. Let me slow down because I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Okay, here's my rock. Let's pretend like it is just spray painted, right? We're gonna, I wanna decide which side is bottom. So I'm gonna place it, you know, whichever way that. So there's bottom. I think this is, this, is, this is my new technique, <laughs> changed today. What I've been doing with these other ones, I've been dipping the bottom. See, that's already pretty. And, and if it's gonna be the bottom in the end, then it's okay, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I already like that anyway. And I place it down. Now, two things. This is spilled paint from last night. So this has been sitting with, originally, I just moved it about an hour ago with the painting drying on top of it. So it was partially covered meaning it could get some airflow, so it, it, so it could start to dry, but it didn't dry out. It didn't form uh, a skin on the top because there's no direct air. So it had a flow going one way, it stays wet, it stays mixed, but there's still moisture evaporating. So it's thickening up. And that's the key to doing a good painted rock is make sure that your paint is, it's gonna be thicker than you would use for any flow uh, or any pour, I guarantee you because these rocks don't have the they don't have the flat flat surfaces we're used to and gravity's going to take that paint and, and it's going to find a way to get it to the bottom okay 
And the thicker the paint, the slower the flow, the more likely you are to keep pattern in the paint. So that's why I always do rocks, usually the day after, especially if I have a good uh, collection of spilled paint. All right, so where is my spoon? I'm gonna show you two different things that I do. And then that's pretty much all. Because there's not, again, there's not much to it. Painted Rocks, I mean, you can, and there's a fantastic, I'm, I'm part of a group, the Painted Rocks group on Facebook. That's different. Those people are nuts, and they are so freaking talented. I, I did a ladybug, and I thought I was the best thing. Oh, look, it's right here. I, I was so impressed with myself, but I, can't, I couldn't do it anymore. It's too, much, too many steps, too many instructions. Um, if I hold it far away, maybe it looks good, but can y'all see my ladybug? You know, and these people are amazed about it. It's incredible what they can do. That's one sort of painted rock. I do a different, you know, painted rock. Mine's, mine's the abstract fluid artist one. All right, so I dipped at the bottom. Now I'm just gonna come through and I'm gonna collect paint. So remember at that top layer, there's some cool stuff. It's different right under that top layer. So who knows what's gonna happen. And this is why I like it. This is why I like doing this with young people because they usually get surprised at what happens with the paint. And you can do a full rock and dip. See how it keeps the pattern if you don't get too aggressive with scooping. And then you can just kind of move it around the rock and see how, how the pattern turns out. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, well then, do it again. You know, these layers are gonna start to dry and, uh, and you'll, see the, you'll see the design and you can already see the design in the ones that I did. Maybe after a while, you know, it clears out and you just wanna go and do it one section. Um, again, I always look for the, the good little gems in here and see where the color is and try to dig it out, you know, go under the paint and come up so it doesn't ruin it. And then, and again, remember, it's, gonna, it's not going to be exactly the same, but you can get an idea of what the color pattern could be. Here's the key, guys. While it's still running and while it's still wet, either with your fingers or with a stick or with a spoon or anything, you need to get look at all angles and get down under here and make sure that the paint has touched all the rock. I mean, you can even touch it to bring it down just like we do on the corners sometimes or at the edges, you know, on a, on a pour, just to get the paint down there. Because it's gonna, you know, while it's still running or while it's still wet, the pattern's gonna change on the surface anyway. So if, I'm sorry if you're in love with what you see immediately because that's not what it's gonna be like in the end. And so this is, you know, this is the process. This is the part that does take, I mean, it, it does take work to get them to come out bright, you know, but I think it's worth it. I mean, you can make such one really cool things happen. Now, if I were teaching this as a class and what we were going for was as close to rock, painted rock perfection, abstract, as we could get, then we would not be done. For me, I'm done. I would do this, I would set it aside, I'll let it dry. I would come maybe an hour later and move each rock over an inch just so that it disturbs the bottom so it's not touching the same spot twice and it minimizes the, the likelihood that it's gonna form a really hard bond to this grill with the glue. That's, it's not necessary, but it's something that I suggest that you do. If I were teaching a class and the end result was to get as perf you know, perfect a painted rock as you could, then there is there's more frequent uh, checks on the rock because I would say you need to come through each time and you need to, kind of like you do with resin, if you do resin work, you know, you come back to the edges and you make sure that, you, you know, you clear the drips so that you don't have this long icicle looking resin piece that you're gonna have to break off at the end, you know, um, because, and, and paint doesn't sand down as well as resin does. And you'd be, you'll be doing what I did at the beginning, which was picking off pieces of paint that looked uh, they're stuck to the bottom. So, and I've done this before where it, it was, I mixed paint instead of uh, using spill paint specifically for rocks. Patterns came out different. You know, it was, it was kind of cool. I, I really liked it. I made a post about it and said, hey, so this is the difference, y'all. It's, it's almost like doing an intentional pour versus a dirty pour. Crazy, wonderful, dirty pour or intentional where I can control and I, I do have some control over what happens. I'm gonna show you one more thing before I go. So here's another one of these that, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. That sure wasn't done. <laughs> Anyhow, it adds texture, I guess. So I've got, I don't know, that's the, it's the second layer, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna 
use this rock. I'll turn this guy around so I can get. Oh, that's another thing. Things I learned. If you have a, a tray full of rocks, don't start with this one. Because by the time you get to this one, and you're painting over here, you have to bring it all the way over every other rock you just painted and were so satisfied with, and I guarantee you, you're gonna get paint spilled on it, and you're gonna be mad. So, just something I think it's funny. All right, so for this one, same thing, what's the bottom? Well, this one is a weird shape. It doesn't really have bottom bottom, but I want in the side that has the most flat surface, so I can, I can increase my chances of it keeping a pattern. So we're gonna say this, this is the bottom, okay? Now, I'm gonna do the same thing I did before, just so I can get paint on the bottom. I'm gonna dip part of it there. You know, it's got something happened. It's kind of cool, but that's not really what I'm going for. What I'm going for is, again, using my spilled paint, or I could even, well, let me do this. Uh, I don't have enough of any paint to do that. I was gonna prepare uh, one of my uh, measuring cups with stacked paint like I would for a, oh, you know what, I can, no. Like stacked paint that I would for a traveling tree pour. But instead, I'm gonna just use with the paint that I have. So again, I'm gonna go under the paint and lift it up so I'm keeping the pattern. And I'm just gonna gently lay it into the cup. I don't want it to spill, I don't want it to fall, I don't need it to, to break the surface of the, of the layer before it. I just wanna layer it and stack it and keep all those cool layers that I have or whatever pattern that I see that I like. You know, I'm gonna go all over this painting and just kind of get random stuff because I wanna see how I can make it look on the painting. Oh, there's some blue over there that I like. And I do paintings this way too. One of some of my first paintings that were, they look wood grain. This is what I was doing. I had messed it up terribly. And I was just getting a spoon and getting the paint and just letting it you know, does drizzling it down the front. Now so sad. But they came out really cool. Okay, so this is what my paint cup looks like now. See all those layers that I because I didn't disturb the paint. And I am going to just I'm gonna let's do a tree a traveling tree. So same technique, you know, you spin, you spin, you spin, it's all in the wrist, it's all in the wrist. I say that a lot on those videos because it really is. And there. <laughs> now it's gonna run, so it's not gonna keep it the way that you might think in your mind, which would be really cool. I guess if you let the paint drive long enough, it might. Oh, and then you just go and touch it and mess it up anyway. Okay, I just did. But it gives you, you still see the pattern, and you still see the, 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 the patterns that are repeating that are kinda of cool. And then again, I just come in randomly and put in more effects. And you could do that, you know, you could, I mean, if you want to. Oh, and I've even, I've even torched before, after, I do this, the rocks, and cells appear. <laughs> and I think that's the coolest thing ever because if you look close enough at him, it's a whole little world going on in there. And, and in my head, <laughs> in my head, in my world, that is exactly what's going on in there. You know, whatever gets you through the day. Right? All right, so now, if I were to have tried to paint this rock by hand first to look like this, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. I bet there is a master painter somewhere who could probably get it done. It would take some time and God bless him for that talent. But I don't have that talent nor that patience and I'm a patient person. What I do have is my spilled paint that was a means to an end to get a painting done that I like, but still has a purpose. So now we need to give this paint a second chance or a third chance or however long it takes, you know, until it until it's all mud. And that's what, I have some cups of mud. You know, I have a cup of mud. This has, a, even has a skin on it uh, that I just need to throw out. It's, it's, it's not gonna be useful for anything. I've tried to use it for base coats before, but because of the consistency of it, it's hard to get it back to the one I want. It's almost like if you go deep enough on the canvas, if you're doing like a swipe or something, it's almost like going through sludge and it's, it's not gonna help your painting. Sometimes you just have to say goodbye. So, anyhow, I'm gonna give you a close-up. Scott Alexander, Pride Studios. Guys, I'm uh, working on the prints. I have a, a new resource that I'm gonna use to, to do them quickly. And it, I believe, if I'm correct, I, wait, are you looking at my head? No, okay. Um, if I'm correct, this particular site, and if it is, it's exciting, and I will spread this word. 
uh, once I can confirm it, I believe that what they are telling me that I can do is I can design or I can, you know, get the prints to them and sell through their website. I have my own gallery link or somehow I can post availability of prints that I have myself and send, they can or be ordered through the site, I send them myself and I get 100% of the commission. Now, I don't know if that's true, but we'll find out. Uh, all right guys, so I, I will see you uh, soon. I wish you all the colors, bye.